Hi, I'm Michael Colley. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pour over with a Hario V60, and I'm going to give you a brief introduction into systems thinking to help you understand how to better fit into your organization. I'm Michael Colley, and I help you bring more of who you are to what you do. My favorite way to make coffee uh, is a pour over. I make a pour over every single morning. Uh, about nine years ago, um, Ashley's cousin was in town and he asked me where I bought my beans and I told him I bought them at the grocery store. He said no and he said that's, you're not getting good beans and I should have known because I um, started my career in the Northwest uh, in Seattle and then on the Olympic Peninsula. And I asked him what beans he was using at the time, and he told me Sleepy Monk, which was from Cannon Beach, Oregon, and I've been mail ordering beans from Sleepy Monk uh, ever since. So I get the monastery blend, and um, I, I like the fact that it says Sleepy Monk and that's the brand of the company because my first career was uh, in theology and spirituality and, and uh, I don't know, it's just kind of a fun way for me to start my morning by drinking a cup of uh, Sleepy Monk coffee. Uh, so what I do with the pour over is I just use a Hario V60, a uh, two cup Hario V60 and um, then I use um, just the Hario filters as well and put a little bit of water in the filter to dampen the filter and I like to do a nice grind on the beans. I have a variety of grinders. Um, I like this Hario grinder because it's uh, it just kind of looks kind of classic and uh, you probably noticed that there's a piece of cork in here and the reason for that is that if you want to grind beans ahead of time and leave them in there uh, obviously you take the cork out and uh, the beans you know the, the grounds fall in um, and then if you want to keep the beans and not use all of them you just put the cork back and it seals, seals out some of the air and keeps it fresher and uh, so I like a hand grinder uh, I do have a nice uh, burr grinder as well but I don't think you can beat a ceramic hand grinder and of course since I'm a coffee geek I have several grinders that are all preset to different settings for pour over French press um, and uh, uh, the clover, which I use as well, um, and then a, uh, a grinder for espresso, too. And, uh, and so with the, with the Hario, I, I dampen um, the filter, and then I put it in, and, uh, and then I have measured the beans already. Um, grind them, just pour them straight into the filter because I like grinding beans uh, for when I get ready to make a cup of coffee. I think it makes the best cup to have a freshly ground uh, beans. And then I just uh, do a little bit of water to get the coffee to bloom. And what, the, what that does is it releases uh, the acids and the tannins from the coffee, uh, which you see that when you, uh, what you have to wait about 30 seconds and um, that's one thing that I probably have the hardest time with in the morning is waiting for that 30 second period um, in order for those acids and tannins to be released but it, it really does make for a better cup of coffee and you'll notice because the filter starts to get some brown color around the ad edges and that's the acids and tannins uh, being released. After that you continue pouring the coffee and you don't want to pour too high. Uh, the height of your pour depends on uh, the amount of coffee that you're making. Um, I usually try to stay uh, about at the uh, two-thirds height on the Hario, and, uh, and then you just want to pour uh, from the inside in a counterclockwise motion uh, going towards the outside. You don't want to pour on the outside going down because when you're done you want the coffee grounds in the Hario to look like an upside down cone. That whole process between grinding and everything, it takes me about 15 minutes and uh, 
when, when my dad comes to visit, he'll he'll actually uh, carry in his Keurig um, <laughs> because he doesn't want to wait 15 minutes for a cup of coffee in the morning. When, when people are over, I don't have a drip machine at the house, and so when people come to visit, I use a 10 cup Chemex. And uh, so if you want coffee faster or you want to do it yourself, um, we do have an espresso machine now. And, uh, and, and I actually like that uh, pretty well, but it, it doesn't have what I get from pour over, which is just a real experience in stillness and slowness and, um, and, and the ritual um, to, uh, you know, I, when I wake up in the morning, I lay in bed and you know, I wish I could say my feet hit the ground right away, but they don't. And I think about my day and I think about good, I also think about bad, I think about challenges, and so when I'm making the cup of coffee, it's a way to slow down and be still, and um, and and know that, you know, as I go throughout my day, I'm going to be alright. And that's what making the pour over each day, in addition to a great cup of coffee, uh, is, is for me. It's that time of stillness and slowing down, which I, I don't think... I get enough of, and I don't think a lot of us get enough of. Nice. Systems thinking for me was about learning that where I had found pain in my career in organizations, um, well, it's, it's how I discovered that what I experienced wasn't personal. Um, and it felt personal before that, and it felt personal for a really long time. As someone who's mid-career at this point, and <clears throat> actually has changed careers and um, is in the process of you know really stepping in and, and reorienting myself and into my third career which is a is a combination of the second and the third um, it was important for me to discover and I, I discovered it accidentally um, which may be one of the best ways to discover it was it was important for me to discover um, how could I make sense of my experience for myself and for others? And, and so last year I took two months off and, and I just wrote. And uh, Ashley had been telling me to write since 2009. And so I had had, uh, I mean, I'd had nine years of, of what I wanted to write in my heart and in my head. And, and I just wrote it all down, and uh, it took two months because I mean it was nine years of, of of challenge and struggle, and and as I wrote it out, I I discovered that uh, number one, systems aren't personal, which means that the responses of people within an organizational system aren't personal, and which means that what I experienced wasn't personal; it was a result of the system. Now, you know, people could say, well, you know, some people. Are jerks and um, you know they were out to get you and you know I don't think it's helpful to look at it that way um, because I, I I think it's better for us if we can uh, use empathy to understand the other even when the other doesn't have our best interest in mind so we can use empathy to understand the feelings of the other person even when the other person doesn't have our best interest in mind and so that's why systems matter to me, and, and that was kind of my discovery of systems. Um, you know, prior to that, I, I had, uh, in the early 90s, um, I'd heard about Peter Senge, uh, even when I was in high school. I was starting to be interested in some leadership literature as a result of, you know, the work of my dad um, and, and the conversations that we would have. And, uh, but Senge was really all that I, I knew, and... As I began to discover more about systems thinking, I began to uh, discover the work of uh, Barry Oshry and uh, Donella Meadows and uh, began to really begin to understand um, that 
everything in the world is a system. And I think what really brought me to the deepest understanding of that was Edgar Schein's uh, Lily Pond. Um, and he's using the Lily Pond to talk about organizational culture, and uh, which I think is great. And something that I have done in my work is I've used the Lily Pond, Shine's Lily Pond, to um, not only understand the, the culture in that pond, which he talks about, and I especially think about the organic matter on the bottom of the pond, um, but it's really everything that, it, when you take a systems view and you look back, you know, it's, what if there's a tree that's planted beside the pond? And if there is, then, um, then whatever the leaves that drop from the tree land in the pond and go down to the pond to form the organic matter. And, and so as I began thinking about Shine's lily pond, I began thinking, what else, you know, if I stepped back from that lily pond, and this was after I'd read um, Danella Meadows, if I stepped back who, uh, from this lily pond, you know, there's leaves that have formed that organic matter. There's a little frog that lives in that lily pond, whether we see him or whether we don't. Um, there is rainfall that comes down from the grass. Um, the, the lilies that are on the pond, uh, if there's too much sun and, and uh, you know, the, the water in the pond goes down and, and then, you know, it's not as clear and <clears throat> it's, um, there was just so many external pieces in a system. And so then I began to discover uh, why do systems matter for other people? Because systems are everything. Everything in life is a part of a system. The parts we see, the parts we don't. Uh, think about the coffee and the pour over that I just made. And so the systems that are involved in that are, are um, the U U.S. mail carrier is how I get the coffee to my house. Uh, the roaster who roasts for Sleepy Monk. Um, the farmer who farms the beans. The shipper who um, carries, you know, the green beans too. Uh, the, you know, Sleepy Monk to the roaster in Oregon, um, the accounting processes, the uh, the currency that I use to purchase the money, which isn't currency at all, but to, uh, PayPal, you know, that I use to purchase the money. I mean, purchase purchase the um, the uh, uh, the coffee and um, all all types of systems. And and I say PayPal even to purchase the money. That I said that accidentally, but honestly, if you use a credit card with PayPal and you know, and you leave it on the credit card, then you're using PayPal to purchase the money to purchase uh, the coffee. I mean, that's what credit is. And, and so, so many things are wrapped up in systems. And so when we begin to understand that everything that we see and live and act in is part of a system, we can begin to step back and recognize that our experience in an organization is not as much a personal experience as it is a systems experience. And honestly, I, I would like to say it's not a personal experience, but I, I'm reluctant to because if I say it's not a personal experience, some people are gonna push back and say, but everything that, but it feels personal. Things that are happening are personal. People and people, people to people interaction is personal. And, and it, it is, it feels that way, right? But most of our responses, because most of us are out for us, um, more than we're out for the other person and that's something that in, in my life I recognize and that I'm working to change in myself as a person and um, and I you know am at a place in my life where I want to start helping groups of people learn to work on that and change that for themselves as well <clears throat> and, and part of that is when we get into the work the work that I do in systems and organizations is when I work as a coach as an executive coach to coach the leaders in the organization to help discern individually what is going on in the system through conversations, coaching conversations individually with those leaders. And then my greatest work is when I get to um, gather that group of leaders within the organization and then begin to unpack with them um, what it is that is good uh, and they can do more good of or what it is that they are doing well and they can do more of and also where are the challenges and so to put those pieces of the puzzle together um, a lot a lot of like we're putting the coffee together you know coffee in a sense is a puzzle it's not a hard puzzle or it's a process I guess that's a better way to put it coffee is a process and work in systems in organization is a process 
So just like we have the Hario V60, the grinder, the kettle, the beans, the scissors to cut open the beans, uh, the cup, the, the heat source, the water, just like we have all of those parts to make this pour over, we have all types of parts in a system. We have the personalities in the system, we have the financial demands in the system, we have the uh, what has always been done here, this way in the system, we have the pressures from competitors that are impacting the system, we have customers who are receiving what is from our system, um, all types of different parts of our systems uh, come together in order to create our work life. And that work life is translated into organizational fit. And so that is why, why, that is why I discovered systems in my life because organizational fit was challenging for me. And so I discovered systems because I thought something was wrong with me. And the truth is, is that nothing's wrong with me. And if you're struggling fitting into your organization, nothing is wrong with you. It's an issue of organizational fit. And so we're going to put together a series of videos to help you better understand not only some unique ways to make coffee, but also some ways to understand how to help yourself better fit into your system uh, through what we are calling organizational fit. I'm Michael Colley. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button. If you'd like to learn more about systems and process and find some tools available as well, please visit my website at michaelrichardcolley.com. And if you would like to leave a comment or subscribe in order to find out when the next video is released, that would be great.